Welcome back, everybody, to the uh, world premiere of the Sonny Liston, Muhammad Ali, 1964-1965 Heavyweight Championship Fights file. Now, um, I've been trying to get the fight file for quite some time. I'd say 12 years. Um... The FBI release what they call it opening up the vault. What usually what they do is they'll make a public announcement that they're going to open up the vault of Sonny Liston or Muhammad Ali, and then they put it out there on the internet in the press. Um, but uh, they'll they'll maybe put three hundred to four hundred pages out. Uh, Sonny Sonny's file was at least four thousand pages. And some files like a Whitey Bulger uh, of the uh, Irish mob, I think he was in Chicago. Um, his file was almost, I think, thirty to forty thousand pages. So it's it's a little, uh, how can I say, not deceiving, but to say they're opening up the vault, they're not really giving you everything, and. Uh, uh, there's there's also a lot of uh, pages that don't have, you know, names because they're trying to protect the witness, the, their their witnesses uh, in the file. So. Um, so no one's ever asked. I mean, when I was starting my research in 2005, I realized that no one's ever asked for the fight file. I wanted the fight file from the existing file, just the fights, the file. I wanted I wanted the FBI to take out just the 64, 65 fights file out of the larger file. I didn't want all that. Other, all, I, didn't, I didn't want the rest of the file. And to my surprise, everyone, um, no one's ever asked for just the fight file but me. So what I want to do is just start out with the, my process of how I went about doing it. Um, the first first thing I tried to do was get the FBI to release the file, and they they basically we talked for like twelve years, and they still basically just wanted to have a conversation. So um, I tried other avenues. So I wrote a letter to the DOJ and the DOJ has uh, what is called the whistleblower program and uh, through the whistleblower program uh, the DOJ released the fight file to me well not to me exactly but um, right after the whistleblower uh, application I completed that um, and also, again, I wrote a letter to uh, members of the DOJ because I felt that they were the FBI and the DOJ were partly responsible for people believing in the myth of the fight, believing that the fights were were fixed because J. Edgar Hoover never had an open investigation. As you know, uh, J. Edgar Hoover was all about surveillance, you know, and uh, so he never he never pre uh, presented his findings after his investigation remember the the boxing the boxing boxing was uh was was uh investigated in the 50s so they already knew jagger jagger who already knew that the ali fights were not fixed and uh ali sunny listen fights were not fixed because uh jagger hoover had uh, FBI agents in every boxing commission in in not only the country but the world. Uh, he had informants. He had he had he had experts that he went to. Um, there's no way that the mafia would be stupid enough to um, do any of their Ill illegitimate practices on a world stage like that. I mean, that's how they clean their money. If you know anything about gangsters that, I mean, I'm not talking about what you see on TV and what, 
I mean, a lot of these gangsters that go on these talk shows now, they're not going to say everything because people are still some of their some of the people that they either uh, stole money from or hurt or some, maybe police officers that they shot. Some of those people, some of them are still alive because they're still alive. Right. So you got this these guys, the ex gangsters mafia guys that are selling books and making movies they can't tell everything uh because they'd get prosecuted so they're, they're only telling you what they can tell you okay so uh take that with a grain of salt um so um i got tired of waiting for the deal for the fbi to to release the file to me and that's why I wrote the letter to the DOJ, because I felt that the DOJ and the FBI were partly responsible, again, for not squashing all these rumors. Because J. Edgar Hoover didn't trust the uh, the news, the, the news agencies, the uh, reporters, because he felt that reporters follow rumors and not leads. So, um, but I said, the reason why this myth is so strong over the last 50 years is because you guys never told the public that you had investigated the fights and had and found your conclusion or conclusions uh, after the fights. So for 50, 50 years, people have, since the fights, 64 and 65 fights, people have just news agencies and editorial copy and book people that wrote books and uh uh what did i say movies made movies books edit editorial copy um did documentaries they've they've had a field day with all their ideas about how the fight was fixed when j Edgar hoover already proved uh that they weren't fixed because you think about it, I mean, you got to use your common sense in this situation, in these kind of things. Who was who was prosecuted? No one. Who went to jail? No one. No one went to jail. I mean, the the FBI has a twelve billion dollar treasure chest. They can they can they can go to court all day, all day long for years. So if they got something, they're gonna get it. Right. So uh, no one's ever been so called if it's if, if, if it was fixed, not one person was prosecuted. Right. Blinky went to went to went to jail for other things outside, had nothing to do with this, these fights. So what I wanted to do was that I, 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 I found I found out. Uh, I knew that Mr. Ali was gonna was really close to death before he died, before the actually before the public. And uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to redeem his name uh, surrounding these fights before he passed. And unfortunately, I didn't think of going to the uh, I didn't think of going to the uh, DOJ. I mean, I had written my letter to the DOJ, but uh, they hadn't responded back. I didn't think of going to the whistleblower program until after he died. I was very, I was very um, saddened by that and disappointed because I wanted to redeem his name while he was still alive. So after about four weeks of just being depressed, I decided that I was going to, uh, that I could still redeem his name after death. And that's what I did. And what happened was, Usually the FBI, they'll make, again, they'll make a public announcement about releasing, opening the vault and releasing the the file or or some of the file to the public. It's a big announcement. The DOJ, they don't do that. They just, because I, because I, when, let me just explain what they do. They just go to their pr contacts in the press and they just um, and release it online. They don't make a public announcement because it would have been kind of strange for the FBI to say, oh, we've opened the vault and then have 
DOJ and said, we're going to, we open the vault, the vault again. I mean, it's kind of, it looks kind of suspicious. So I think that's why they went through their own contacts to release the file. They, I mean, they actually put it online and then they, um, uh, that allowed, that allowed uh, reporters to see it and write about it. And I'll get into the press, some of the, some of the press releases on that file, on the fight file, uh, that kind of changed the paradigm. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that were said in the file that prove what uh, my my grandmother Jodine and the Ali family all always knew, always have known, and that was that the fights were not fixed. Uh, Jodine always said, if uh, usually Sonny when he when he wins about, he showers her with gifts, but after the Ali listen for uh, Ali fight. She said she didn't shower him her with gifts. So um, she said, I'd never seen if he if he did fix the fight, I never saw any money from it. So I'm just going to take you step by step. And um, in my process of of getting getting the uh, DOJ to release the file, uh, they didn't they didn't call me like and I thought again, I thought the FBI had done it because I've been talking to them for 12 years. But it was actually the whistleblower uh, program that I went through because it, it happened right after I did that, like weeks, a few weeks after I did that, uh, filed the whistleblower uh, program. And I have the letter that I actually, I'm going to read that in my next video, the letter that I wrote to the DOJ about, you know, the shame that we've had to endure as as the Sunny Listen Estate with all these all these all these lies and innuendos about about the fights you know we we have to as as an as the sunny listen estate we have to live with all these these people's ideas about how sunny lived and died i mean they'll they'll say anything you know you know i mean there was the shauna cell in his book uh um uh, the murder of sunny liston las vegas heroin, heroin and heavyweights he said that Sonny had a heart on when um, they found him in in the house after he died. That's that's just disgusting. I don't know. I don't know why he would say something like that. He didn't see the autopsy report because I have the autopsy report. It was only released to me. So you know, so you're dealing with a lot of people like that. Uh, they're just trying to sensational sensationalize uh, the death of Sonny at the expense of my family having to deal with that with the shame and embarrassment of like people thinking that he died like that so um oh i want to show you the i'm going to show you some of the uh here's the uh first page of the the 465 page 465 page uh, file that was from the DOJ release. Um, yeah. So one thing I want to say about the file is that there is no nothing about uh, the fight. The fights. It starts, the file starts in 1966. So um, there's no file. The file does not even get into the fights because, again, J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI and um, the Ke Kef Offer, uh they've been they've been investigating the boxing boxing since 1950. So, and again, the fights were 64 and 65. So they 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 knew that the fights were not fixed. And the mafia again. They clean their money through boxing. They clean their money through legitimate practices because they want to get out of the racket. They're only in it because uh, Italians were treated like niggers. Like they were treated like they, so they were they were from the South. They were treated differently. They were they were wrongly jailed and imprisoned. They were lynched. They were beaten. Uh, 
they were considered black when they came to this country. Um, so they had it rough, you know, they couldn't get jobs. So they had to do what they had to do to survive. They, you know, when you're trying to survive, sometimes you have to do things that are unethical. But, you know, they don't want to have their kids to look looking up to a gangster. So they want to get out of the racket. So they start investing in other businesses. And, and boxing was one of them, you know. Um, so boxing was a way to get out of the racket and clean their money and, and, and make more money in a legitimate way. Uh, so they can get out of, get out of the, the game, you know? So, um, if you, if you just watch movies about gangsterism and it's, it's, you have to, you have to be around that to understand it. You have to know it to understand it. So, um, a lot of the movies exaggerate it. It's, it's just exaggerated, you know, like the movie below that guy with Johnny Depp, that, that, that particular gangster, he was small time. It's just blown, overblown, right? So um, let's get into my my letter. Kind of like my uh, not not necessarily my letter yet, but just the whole premise of why I was trying to go about getting the file. Um, and it's funny because even when you, when I show people the documents, <laughs> they're so their their minds are so massaged by the myth that they they can't believe their own eyes. Like I show them the birth certificate, and they're like, "That's not the birth certificate." <laughs> it's just it's 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 amazing. Uh, you have fifty fifty years of people telling you something and you believe it because you know they're they're seen as the as authority figures and you, and when i when I show people the birth certificate they don't want to they want to they want to disprove it and what I tell them is everything that I'm showing you you can prove you can pick up the phone and call Arkansas and uh find out. Because I'll get people who will say like, well, they didn't make birth certificates uh, until after Sonny was born. I'm like, oh, that's convenient. That That's really convenient that they didn't make him until after Sonny was born. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, protect the kind of the cottage industry that was built around a myth. You know, because you have websites on YouTube that that are about Sonny and theories about how he died and all these kind of things. And these people are making money from this. They're making money. They have hundreds and thousands of, of, of followers and they make their living off the myth. And that's why it's like slavery, right? They, if you look at Sonny, like a slave, uh, 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 they couldn't stop the slave trade because it was, it was the global economy. Everybody was making money off it. And like, no, everybody had to, to, to have slavery because you couldn't have one country making making money off off slave so much money off slavery they can build a a, a larger navy a, a bigger army and they could overtake you so people said we got to get into slavery so that we could compete with the other uh, powers global powers and uh, that's what they did that's why the world became the slavery became global because they didn't want to have to to end up um, not being able to compete on the world stage. So they had to get in it, get into slavery in order to make them the same amount of money as every other country. It's the same with the the Sonny Liston story. Everybody tries to get the little piece, and then they 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 want to um, one 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 book has one theory, and another book has another theory. I mean, Sonny's done more dead more dead than he ever had done a live, you know what I'm saying? With all these thousands and thousands of websites and books and movies. And it's like, he died at 34 years old. He couldn't possibly have done all these things in one lifetime. So um, again, it's a cottage industry, the Sonny Lester myth. That's why nobody wants to hear the truth or everybody wants to dispute the truth because they're, they've they invested in, in, the, in the lie. They've invested in the myth. Um, they're making a living off it. They don't want to hear the truth because um, I've shown all the documents to the um, 
most of, most of the news agencies around the world. They know about me. They know I have all the documents. I guess they don't want to feel illegitimate after they've told people for 50 years that this is this is this is the way it was. So they I have to I have to bring it out. I have to bring it out. They're, they're letting me bring it out so they don't have to look illegitimate, you know? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. Wow, he did what? Oh, he had all the documents? Wow. Wow. Well, you know, what are they going to say, you know, after all these years telling the same story over and over again? So anyway, I I have the gift of gab, as you can see. Uh, so I'm going to read this about my kind of my journey to getting the the uh, oh, I didn't show you. Uh, this is 465 pages of the file, the fight file. Look how thick it is, and this is there's probably more than this. There's probably thousands of more pages. And again, there's nothing about the fight in this file. And this is a fight file. Why should, Why is there nothing in the fight? There's nothing about the fights in the fight file. Because the fights were not fixed. And what did J. Edgar Hoover care about most? The Nation of Islam. Why? Because they figured, he, he felt that the Nation of Islam was a hate group. And there's also a there's always been a file on the black race. There's a file, and I'm gonna do uh, a video about that. There's always been a file on the black race, right? They've always been watching this because <clears throat> they thought that the the uh, the 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 Russians were trying to influence us. It's all all stems from the Bolshevik Revolution. Uh, so. Um, they thought we were going to become communists because we were so anti, uh, they thought we were anti-American. But anyway, um, I'll get into, into that later. Um, so if there's nothing in the fight file about the fights, what is the fight f f file about? It's about enemy number one. Who was enemy number one in the 60s? The Nation of Islam. Because Why? Because they thought white the white man was the devil with blue eyes, right? So they considered the FBI considered uh, they considered uh, the Nation of Islam a hate group. They were enemy number one, the Nation of Islam, and who was their spokesman? Mister Muhammad Ali, or one of their spokesmen. So. That's just the gist of it. We're gonna have. I'm gonna have a, uh, more when I get into the file. I'm gonna have more um, more to talk about. But um, I got some reading to do. It's 465 pages. Uh, came out in 2018, and uh, I just didn't have time to talk about it because I was writing my book, finishing my book, and what else was I doing? I was. Uh, I was surviving. I'm an artist. So um, I was surviving, doing my thing. Uh, so anyway, here we go. I tried to get the Department of Justice to release the 1964 and 1965 Ali uh, Liston fight files. This would be the first time in history that someone would ask specifically for the fight files. I had tried for years to get the FBI to release them through their FOIA process, but to no avail. I wanted these documents before Mr. Ali would pass away because Mr. Ali and Sonny being best friends, I had firsthand information that Mr. Ali was very sick, even before the public or the press. I wanted to redeem his name surrounding the fights. I uh, specifically just wanted uh, just wanted the fight files only. 
Even though he eventually passed away, I was still able to redeem his name after his passing by writing a personal letter to the Department of Justice. So I'm going to read that letter in my next video. Um, about the special relationship the Listons had with the Ali family, Ple uh, pleading with them to fulfill my wishes did the trick. Um, and also I kind of shamed him and said, You're, it's your fault that we, um, we've had to deal with all this, these, these innuendos about the fights because you guys unwillingness to, to, uh, say you had investigated the fights already. Um, the Department of Justice answered my request with the release of the fight files shortly after Mr. Ali died. But there was no public announcement about the potential release date, something that the FBI did traditionally with their FOIA program. So at, so at first, I did not know that the release of the fight file came from the DOJ. I called the FBI to ask them if they were the ones that released the fight file, and they told me no. They said that they had nothing to do with it. It sounded like they were passing a buck on that one. Um, my agent called me to inform me that the file was released through the press contacts of the DOJ. And I will uh, read some of the press releases from the file release because they talk about what I've just talked about. The fact that it was that our, that the that the FBI had proven that there was no there was no fix. Proving to the world that Geraldine Liston and Ali family already knew what what the let me say that again. Um, proving to the world what Geraldine Liston and the Ali family already knew, and that was that the Ali Liston fights were not fixed. And if you look at my other videos, I go through you know the the uh, 1964 fights, 65 fights, why. Um, Sonny wasn't using his jab, the examinations that occurred after the fight. Also, uh, I talked about the second fight, 65 fight, how uh, uh, Sonny's jab was his, his, his hubris, his strength, and his weakness. And I'm going to talk about that in my book. I'm going to open up my book. My book's on Amazon. It's called uh, Beast, the Deconstruction of... Charles Sonny Liston, uh, and I talk how I talk about how uh, Ali beat Sonny. Um, you got to understand, Howard Cosell wasn't like doing the commentary in that fight, so he had yet to say, "Oh, the rope a dope" or the Ali shuffle. Um, you got to understand. Ali was doing what made him a champion in that fight. He was doing the Ali shuffle. He was doing the rope-a-dope, all that. The anchor punch, if you watch, if you look at Ali's knockouts, he's used that anchor punch his whole career. That, that same punch that beat Sonny, what he knocked out Sonny with. Okay. So Ali's style has been with him his whole career. He just changed. He just broke tradition because he was an artist. He was an artist. And Sonny broke tradition too because he used his jab. Uh, he revolutionized his the jab because you're supposed to bring the jab back on the same line after you throw it. And um, Sonny used his jab as a power punch and a knockout punch. But because he put so much weight into the jab, it, it hyperextended his arm and the muscle pulled it down below his chin. And Ali took advantage of that. I'm going to talk about that in my book. He took advantage of Sonny's jab falling after his jab. Right. And that's how he was able to be open for the overhand. Right. Sonny was open for the overhand. Right. And he was coming it forward as uh, and Ali was able to throw his jab three seconds faster than anybody in the world at that moment. Three seconds faster than anybody in the whole world. And I'll talk about how, why it, Sonny even said after the fight, that punch surprised him. Because no one ever threw an overhand right 
that fast in the history of boxing into Ali. And I'll tell you how he did it. He did it in an unorthodox way. And I'm going to tell you about it because I wrote about it in my book, how Sonny Ali trained to take advantage of Ali's jab. Because I'm a fighter. My teacher taught Bruce Lee jiu-jitsu. Bruce Lee's not the father of jiu-jitsu. I don't care what the Gracie say. Um, but we're going to talk about that jab and, and uh, Ali's training for, to fight to beat Sonny. So anyway, uh, please subscribe uh, on my, for my channel. I appreciate it. And we'll talk about uh, this again in my next video. And we'll get a little bit into uh, my book, Beast, The Deconstruction of Charles Sonny Liston on Amazon. And uh, my blog is at linnellgardner.com, my Sonny Liston blog. That's L-Y-N-E-L. G-A-R-D-N-E-R dot com. All right. Take care. Thank you.